Rectus femoris is a unique and complex muscle anatomically and as such has a number of unique and complex ways in which the muscle will fail and if we understand how something is constructed we understand how and why something fails. Rectus femoris is frequently described as a muscle within a muscle. We have an indirect head that forms the central intramuscular tendon of rectfem and this has a bipennate type muscle configuration. We also have a direct head which has a unipennate type configuration with its aponeurosis forming along the anterior surface of the muscle. So we have a bipennate muscle surrounded by a unipennate muscle. The distal tendon arises from the posterior aponeurosis of the muscle and this continues on to form the most superficial layer of the trilaminar quadriceps tendon. It has two tendinous origins, the direct head which originates from the AIIS and the indirect head which originates from the superior acetabular ridge and posterior lateral aspect of the hip joint capsule. Recent studies even suggest a third head deep to glute min and possibly another that arises from the ASIS but as yet this remains beyond the scope of imaging. Evulsions of the direct head origin at the AIIS are not uncommon especially in the pediatric population owing to the vulnerability of the hypothesis. Retraction greater than 15 millimeters may warrant surgical opinion so as to manage recovery and prevent hypertrophy and heterotrophic ossification of the hypothesis. Here there is an evulsion of the direct head of rectus femoris with approximately 8 millimeters of retraction post a sprinting injury. Small echogenic foci are a common finding as they are at the triceps insertion, subscapularis insertion and Achilles insertion. And as in these examples, this is not calcific tendinosis, though it is possible to have HADD at the direct head origin. The origin of the indirect head looks like this. And the easiest way to identify this is to simply find the central intramuscular tendon more distally, turn long on it and follow it back to its origin at the lateral aspect of the hip joint. It's also possible to identify this from a lateral approach with the patient lying on their side. It's important to be able to identify this origin, especially in the case of an acute injury. The two tendons do form a conjoined tendon of sorts, though there is only a small intermingling of fibers. Acute rectum injuries will almost always be from a kicking or sprinting injury those symptoms will vary. In many cases, symptoms are relatively mild and patients will only present in the three to four days after the injury with prolonged and excessive soreness. The first area of assessment is the central intramuscular tendon or the indirect component of rectus femoris as an injury here represents the most severe or significant injury and has the longest return to play time. Here is an injury post kicking and we can see a discontiguous central tendon consistent with a high grade proximal MTJ tear of the indirect component of rectus femoris with a complete tear of that central tendon. In a similar kicking injury, we can see an intact indirect tendon, but we have a tear of the muscle fibers attaching to the tendon. The eye of Sauron analogy is often used with these injuries, but I find these analogies to be as tenuous as they are tedious. This is a proximal musculotendinous junction tear of the indirect rectus femoris with an intact tendon. Occasionally, this is referred to as a paraseptal injury, a term that I find confusing and I imagine so too with the athlete and the athlete's treating team. Here's a cool case. Post sprinting, we can see first with the direct component an intact origin, but just distal to its origin, Origin, we have irregularity and edema at the superficial or anterior aponeurosis, meaning we have a proximal MTJ tear of the direct rectus femoris component. Similarly, with the indirect component, we have an intact origin, but just distal to the origin at the region of the conjoined tendon, we have edema and abnormality. So we have a proximal MTJ tear of both a direct and indirect rectus femoris component. Here is one of the more spectacular injuries we'll encounter in musculoskeletal ultrasound as a whole and one unique to rectus femoris. This is an intramuscular degloving injury, essentially a dissociation of the indirect and direct component, common in the older teenager, especially post kicking. And in spite of the spectacular appearance, the prognosis is good and the return to play short. Here is a degloving rectum injury 10 days post injury. We can see evidence of healing and there's also the suggestion of a concurrent MTJ tear of the indirect rectum with an intact central tendon. This is an interesting injury. We can see we are well clear of the indirect and direct muscular tendons junctions. We have intramuscular fluid and edema at the posterior lateral aspect of the muscle and conjecture and disagreement abounds as to whether this represents a myofascial, myoaponeurotic 
or whether this is simply an iteration of a distal musculotendinous tendon junction tear of rectus femoris. And for a long time, I favoured the latter. I thought this to be the most elegant and simple solution, but it's too simple and the rect fem too nuanced. And such a solution fails to account for these injuries that occur more proximally within the muscle. So it's not a distal MTJ tear. Historically, this has been described as a myofascial injury, but even lately this has come into question and for good measure. This injury looks near identical to a similar injury we encounter in the calf. And this medial gastroc injury is best described as a myoaponeurotic injury. And so it follows, logically, that this too should be a myoaponeurotic injury of rectus femoris. Here are two more examples of proximal myoaponeurotic injuries of rectus femoris with the increasing complexity of the associated hematomas. Again, we are well clear of both the indirect and direct musculotendinous junctions. Here though is a distal musculotendinous junction injury of rectus femoris. Again, post-kicking, we see abnormality of the posterior aspect of the muscle, that is, still MTJ tear with a complete tear of the distal tendon of rectus femoris. In long, we see the same and note that the abnormality is not located at the distal end of the central indirect tendon, which is a common misconception. With flexion of the quad, we can see some bull nosing of the proximal muscle of rectus femoris, helping to demonstrate a complete tear. Rectus femoris is a complex and unique muscle, but one well within the realm and domain of ultrasound assessment. Thanks for watching guys, like and subscribe for more.